Welcome to the SolidCam University channel. This video's topic is drilling versus drill recognition. So the drilling toolpath is what you would use if you're going to just do any kind of drilling or tapping or spotting toolpath. Um, the drilling operation allows you to choose any one of those tools. And really, it, all it is is just moving in the, uh, the Z direction or the tool axis direction. The drill recognition is a version of that where you have a little more in terms of a recognition functionality. Uh, so in this video, we're going to cover when you would use one versus the other and the differences between the two. So we'll start with the regular drilling operation. So I'll just right click on setup, add milling operation, and we'll go to drilling. So the drilling operation manager, uh, this was covered in a previous training video on our YouTube channel. Here I'm just going to go through some of the basics to highlight the differences between the two operations that we're covering today. So first let's do geometry. So click on new. And what we have here is just a series of filters. All we're really looking to do is choose some sort of uh, circle or a drill point to recognize where we want to actually do some drilling. So you always have the ability to click on circle, get the center of that circle. You can click on the wall of a hole or you can click on the face. And when you click on the face, it actually grabs all the complete circles in that face. Now, if this was a tapered wall or a curved surface or something like that, then that would not be a complete circle. It'd be some sort of wrapped or warped circle. So you wouldn't be able to select it this way. There are functions to do that uh, covered in other training videos. But in this case, we're just talking about this, this planar one. Um, so you'll see it has to be a complete circle. It did not include that arc right there. But if I said include arcs, it includes that arc now. So that ha that gives you the ability to kind of filter through this. One other filter we'll cover in this window is by radius. If there's a specific radius that I'd like to drill, let's say of that counterbore there, I'll just grab the counterbore. And now when I click on this face, I only select the holes that have that diameter of a circle in this face. You'll notice that it didn't even recognize those other ones. Okay, so just that is the geometry selection of the drilling operation. Let's go and grab our tool. And then we'll go to levels. So in levels, in the drilling operation, you can define it either by your own definition. So you type in where you'd like it to start, or you can associate it with a face on your solid. Or the final option is by updated stock. And you'll see that it just says auto. Basically, this is looking at your stock, the, the resultant stock of all your operations. So if this part had not been faced yet, by updated stock means it goes right to the top of my stock definition. If I did face it, or I did a pocket above that, or if I had multiple holes and they had multiple start points, this would be recognizing the updated stock. So it would start the drilling toolpath right from the stock. In terms of the depth, again, you can do user defined. So if I were to go into one of these holes and choose just the hole there, I can associate it with that face. And then using depth type, I can either do it to the cutter tip, full diameter, or I can add a diameter that I'd like to stop at in the case of spotting or countersinking. If I go to the pull down menu, we can see that we can do top of hole. And the reason you would want to do top of hole is that from the top of the hole, you might want to go an additional amount. So this actually just allows you to go right from the top of the hole that you selected in your upper level, basically. And then you can go down a certain depth using the delta box. So this just allows you to do that incremental amount. Uh, this is actually pretty useful for template creation. If we go to bottom of target, then this automatically makes this a through hole no matter what you're doing. Or if you want it to go from the bottom of the, of the target and then pull up by a little bit, again, you can use this in your templates to basically say, at the bottom of the part, always leave a certain amount of material. So this is your depth control of all those holes that you select in the geometry section with your single tool. And of course, in technology, you have control over the cycles and the sorting of those holes. If you look in the top left corner of the drilling operation, we've actually added 2D drilling and 3D drilling. And the difference with the 3D drilling is not only do you choose the hole that you'd like to drill, in this case, let's say we grab this hole right here, The tool is the same, it's just the levels that are a little different. You can see that it goes from the top of the stock or the top of the target this time, and it goes down to a lower level, not a depth. Inside SolidCam, anytime you see lower level instead of a depth, it is more of a recognition function, meaning that it's gonna look at this entire target and determine the depth for me. So let's actually make it a little more dramatic here. I'm gonna grab all the holes on this face. 
and then we'll make it a skeleton view so you can see that they're all at different depths. So in this one operation, with a single tool, with all those holes selected, rather than giving them all the same depth, I can now actually give them their own individual depths based off the target. So that gives me the ability to choose all the holes and then just get it to find all those levels for me. So that is 2D and 3D drilling, the very basic drilling toolpath inside SolidCam. But that is more of a single click, all in one kind of operation. There's really no variability there other than with the 3D drilling. Let's take a look at what happens when you do drill recognition. So it's in the name, it's a recognition toolpath. When I go to new geometry, I'm not choosing the individual holes anymore. I'm actually adding filters for when I just do a find holes on the entire part. This case though, it actually gives me a grouping. So it recognizes the different shapes of each one. And I can see which ones are there. If I expand it, I can see how many of each group there are. And this allows me to kind of filter through this if I don't want to select all the holes. But going back to the idea of filters, let's take a look at how some of the filters inside drill recognition actually work. So we'll start with the very simplest one, hole diameter. This works very similar to how we saw with the 2D drilling operation, except this one actually looks at the actual diameter of the hole. So if I had done this radius or this diameter in the drilling operation, it would not have recognized those holes because when I click on this face, it doesn't see that diameter, it sees the diameter of the counterbore. But if I select the diameter of that actual hole this time, do a find holes, it finds all the holes of that diameter that are actually the holes. So not just the counterbores. The counterbores are part of the group over there, but it actually finds the holes themselves. If we exit out of here, let's try another filter. Let's do a filter for color. You can see that some of those holes are red. So what I'll do is I'll pick from the model. So I just click on pick on model. It's waiting for me to choose the color. This happens to be all red. In this case, red 255. So now when I do find holes, it analyzes the target and only chooses those holes that have that color. This is a great way to really um, to really segregate the holes that you want to, to machine or to drill. Uh, these might be deeper holes. These might require a different drill. Whatever the reason is, you have the ability here to, to pick and choose based off color. And this is kind of more of a design change, but it can really help to organize uh, your, your workflow. We'll just do one last filter. In this case, the filter is 2D boundary. So if you imagine that you have a large part, multiple holes, even holes of the same color, the same size, I'm only looking to do the ones found in that, that square there. So what I'll do is click add. It brings us to our contour selection screen, the same one we see in target and uh, in, in um, pocket and profile. Grab that, constant Z. So now everything within that square is what I want to click on. So when I click on find holes with no other filters applied, it only finds those three holes for me in that one section there. Okay, so let's go to tool. Tool selection is the same. This is still a drilling operation. I'll still choose whatever drill or tap or uh, countersinking tool, whatever I'm looking for. Uh, when we get to levels, we'll see that we don't actually have any individual or group um, depth selection. What we have is depth edits. It actually recognized the depth of the holes for me. So if I just click on this right here, we can see the three individual holes. You can see that they highlight as I click each one. And if we come over here, we can adjust the upper level, the drill depth, we can adjust the delta depth. We can adjust, adjust even the depth type. So let's say all these should have been uh, full diameter, I can click on that one and I can apply, I can apply all if I want to. If I wanted to, I could say, let's just do hole two as just a cutter tip. We'll just apply it to that one. So you see now that they actually separate the group. So they still have the same sort of uh, locations, the same sort of everything, except that one of them is a little different. In this case, we know that one is full diameter and one is cutter tip. We'll do save and calculate on that. Skeleton view. See that that one individual hole was not as deep as the other ones. So you still get that individual control over the depths. 
but in this case, you have to actually assert a little, little more control. So it's not actually recognizing the target. What it does is just recognize the holes for you and gives you a little more of a filtering selection option. Um, but in either case, both sets of toolpaths give you whatever you need to individually select or group select the holes you're looking for in different ways and it all really depends on the geometry that you have in front of you. There's never a time where I would say drilling and drill recognition are only for certain times. I would say look at the geometry you have and see what you can apply. Um, one place I've seen where drill recognition comes in handy over the drilling operation is sometimes when you're using a translated file. Translated from a step file or an IGES file, sometimes the hole is not defined with that exact radius according to the tolerance of SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDCAM. Sometimes drill recognition will find those holes better than, um, than the drilling operation. But I would say both of them are options when you're trying to drill a hole, depending on upper level, lower level, and the diameter you're looking for. Any questions on this or anything else from SOLIDCAM, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115. You can send us your questions or your parts via, via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.